I'm Bebo and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you the process that I've refined over many years of how I like to tape my batons. We're also going to go over some basic baton care and some new rule changes that you should know before you start taping. I'm excited to jump into these, so let's get going. The first step is to wash and sanitize our batons. If you're like me, now that it's summertime, I like to do a lot of practicing outside and that has caused the ends of my batons to get pretty dirty. So this will help them look nice and bright like new. I'm also going to be sanitizing the shaft of my baton to help prevent the spread of germs, which is so important now more than ever, as well as it will help the tape stick to the shaft better when we get to taping it a little bit later. So first I'm gonna unwrap all the old tape up of this one and show you how I wash them. on how you like, get to the competition, and have to change it on the fly, and then further have to compete with a baton that you're not used to seeing in practice. That's a nightmare that, and some unnecessary added stress that we want to avoid. So it's very important that you be aware of your organization's rules. Under IBTF, WFNBTA, and WBTF, the rules are pretty much the same at this point, which is great. It streamlines all the different organizations for us, and the rules are like this you can have 50% of the metal shaft taped. So from here to here, not including the ball on the tip of the baton, you can have 50% of this taped. That's a pretty good amount and you can do it however you'd like. It all has to be one color, however, black, white, or gray. Additionally, it has to be right in the middle. So each end point of the middle tape has to be the same distance from the end as it is on either side. So we're going to begin by measuring our fur baton and getting it prepped to tape. Before we start measuring the lengths of the baton that we want taped, it's important that we have our tape ready to go so we can simply grab it off the table and stick it on once we've measured it all out. For this part, I like to take my grip tape, which is my very favorite Gamma Freestyle Baton Grip from Starline Baton. Today I'm using this Wilson brand. I prefer the kind without any dots, the kind that's pretty thin, and it doesn't have any other indentations, so it's fairly smooth, but I know that it's absorbent and grippy enough for me to twirl with. So 
So I'm going to take off this little labeled sleeve that comes on top of it. It's like electrical tape and you can very simply use electrical tape for this portion as well. I just don't want to be wasteful and since this portion of the baton will be covered by other tape, you won't see the label. So this is just an easy way to use this. I'm going to cut it into thirds, so three equal pieces. And I'm going to take the little paper off, like I said, so it's all ready to go. So now that I've got my three little pieces of tape, I'm ready to measure off where the tape will start, where it will end, and then I'm also going to measure the balance point. Now, if you remember when I was talking back about the rules, the tape has to be equidistant from the ends so that it covers the middle portion of the baton. However, if you find the balance point of the baton, that's not exactly the middle. So what we have to do instead is we're going to do a little bit of math. And I've actually written out an equation for you to be able to figure this out according to your baton's measurements, but I'll go by mine for this video. So my baton's length is a total of 31 inches, and that's including the rubber tips. So this is where our measuring tape comes in. So I know that the entire length of the baton from the ball to the tip is 31 inches, which it is, thankfully. But now we have to measure the length of the metal shaft. So that's where the metal meets the rubber on each end. So I'm going to stick my little measuring tape right where that starts and see exactly how long it is. Mine is 26 and a half inches. So I'm allowed to have 50% of this 26 and a half inches taped. However, I actually prefer a little bit less than that. So half of this would be about 13.25 inches and that looks about like that. And that's a little bit more tape than I prefer, but luckily we don't have to have the maximum amount. I can have as much as I want as long as it's less than that 13.25 inches. I prefer something closer to about 11 inches. So in order to figure out how far from the ends that this needs to begin and end, I'm going to do a little bit of math. If I were going with the maximum 13.25 inches, I know that the end space, the free space that happens on either side of the tape would be about six, a little bit over six inches long. But like I said, I like less tape than that. So I'm going to measure mine for about 11 inches of tape, which looks about like this in the middle. So that math that I was talking about, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the full length of the metal shaft I'm going to subtract the amount of the length of the tape that I want, which is 11 inches, and then I'm going to divide that by two. And that math comes out to about seven and a half inches of free space on either side. And like I said, since we're not going to be marking the true center, we're marking the balance point of the baton, instead of finding the middle and then finding the distance point from there, we're going to simply go from the ends and work our way in. So I'm going to find seven and a half inches from this part, from this meeting point of the tip all the way to seven and a half inches in, I'm going to get my little piece of tape ready to go. So I'm going to find that distance, make sure it doesn't move on me, and just simply mark off right there. And I like to kind of find a place where the middle of the tape meets that end point so it's right on the mark. So now I'm going to wrap this tape around it, kind of stretch it a little bit just to make sure that that adhesive is nice and sticky. And then my other little trick is to circle your finger so you're gonna pinch it and you're actually just going to wrap around it to kind of heat up that adhesive to make sure that it sticks really, really well because we don't want that peeling up at all. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on this end. I'm gonna find seven and a half inches from the end point. I'm gonna do the same thing where I stretch the tape just a little bit, and then I'm going to warm it up with my fingertips to make sure that it gets nice and sticky. Now that I have the start and the end point of my tape marked off, it's time to find the balance point. Now it's important, like I said, that we don't find the middle point because you'll notice as you toss the baton, if it's taped in the middle, that it's not quite the middle of the rotation of the baton. So instead, when you're watching the baton, you'll see it make these kind of big loops around instead of stopping and being the rotation point around which the baton turns. So for me, that's just a personal preference. You're welcome to tape it wherever you like. And based on your own baton, kind of finding this balance point might be a little bit different. For me, I know that my balance point on my superstar baton is not quite in the middle. It's a little bit closer to the middle on batons like a light star, but I know for mine, it's a little bit closer to the ball. So I'm gonna stick out my finger so I can balance the baton right on top of it 
and see if I can find that perfect balance point. So I found it pretty quickly. I might have done this a few times. So I'm going to take my tape. My third piece is all ready to go. And I'm just going to simply mark off where my baton's balance point is. Again, using the same technique where I warm it up a little bit so it doesn't get off there. So you can kind of see now that this tape is a little bit closer to this end than it is to this end, and that's because of the balance point of my baton. The balance point is not quite the center because it helps the centripetal force build up as you release the baton, and it can increase your revolution overall. That has nothing to do with the tape really, but the tape can simply support that so we can better see the baton and track it to catch it. Next up, we're ready to start adding the grip tape. But first, of course, just like we did with the first step, we want to make sure that we have our electrical tape all set and ready to go so that when we get it all taped up, we can simply grab it off the table. I use three pieces of black electrical tape and three pieces of white electrical tape, but one of my pieces of white electrical tape I split up the middle, so I'll show you how that's done. Each of my pieces of electrical tape I like to be about three inches long. They can be much shorter than that, but I like to really be able to wrap it around multiple times to make sure it's nice and secure. So each piece is going to be about, about this long, two or three inches long. I'm just going to set it here on the edge of the table so it's easy to grab and go. Now that I've got my three pieces of black tape and my three pieces of white tape cut, I'm going to cut one of my white pieces of tape in half. So to do this, I take my scissors, and this is the easiest way that I've found to do it so that I make sure that they're nice and straight and not too crooked. I'm going to lay the tape along the blade of my scissors so that it's nice and even on both sides. And I'm going to simply cut it right up the middle. And I'll kind of give you an explanation as to why I do this a little bit later. This is the last step that we'll do in taping our batons. Next up, we're ready to start with the grip tape. So I have a very specific technique that I have developed over the years that aligns with my preferences. I first, of course, unwrap it all, and then I take the clear plastic wrap off of the top, and I cut it off right here. So you'll notice that on most of these, there's this part where it starts to angle in and taper off toward the end. I don't like to use that part. I like when it's all the same width. So I find there's like a little notch where you notice it squares off and it all becomes one equal width, and that's right where I snip off that tapered portion. Go ahead and throw that part away, and now I'm going to take off the clear plastic wrap. And next is my, um, my very special secret trick. So now that I've got the plastic wrap off, I'm going to take the tape, and I'm going to very gently stretch it. And I like to do this, and you'll kind of hear the little fibers stretching out in the tape, and I make sure that I don't pull too hard to break it. I've done that many, many times, and it's so frustrating because sometimes it can cut right at the wrong place and you won't have enough tape to tape your baton. I stretch it out so that it begins curling in toward the middle. And this way, once you've taped it, it won't additionally stretch much. I used to have an issue where I would tape my baton and then the more I twirled it, the tape would begin slipping down the baton and really stretch out. So this is how I prevent that from happening so I don't have to keep re-taping over and over and over again and the, ta the tape is already all pre-stretched out so I know that it won't happen more once I begin twirling it. So now that my tape is all nice and stretched, I'm going to take it and I'm going to make sure that the grippy side is out. There's kind of this like drier, rough side on the inside. And so that's going to be, like I said, the inside of this fold so that the grippy portion is facing out. So I'm going to fold it right in half long ways like this. That way the grippy portion is against the baton so it doesn't um, slip on the baton itself and against your hand so the baton doesn't slip out of your hand. So I'm going to fold it in half all the way down just to make a crease on that middle line. And it likely won't stay in that fold as you go, but it will be a good enough of a crease that when you tape it, you'll know exactly how to align it because we don't want any folds that are just off that can make for some awkward taping. If you find that this half fold slips a lot when you're twirling it, I also do another method sometimes when I find that I'm having that issue where I'll take a piece of electrical tape and I'll roll it up so that the sticky side is out and I will stick it right in the middle part of that fold there and that will help it stick but it 
creates a, the tape, it causes the tape to be a little bit thicker than it usually is, which I also don't really prefer. I prefer thinner tape so that I can feel the grip of the baton. I prefer to tape my batons in a spiral so that you can see pieces of the metal in between. That way you can see the chrome of the baton and that gives it the appearance that it's spinning faster. When tape is taped solid, so you have solid black tape all the way through, it gives the appearance the baton is spinning slower because you can't see the reflection off of the chrome. So that's another little twirling hack that I want to pass on to you and why I always tape my baton spiraled instead of solid. The only time that I tape my baton solid is for um, college field twirling because my hands get really sweaty. They did out in the Texas heat at Baylor, so I knew that I kind of needed that solid tape and it didn't really make much of a difference because the baton still looked like it was spinning fast enough to wow college audiences. So now that my tape is all folded in half and ready to go, it's important that you tape it going the right direction. Otherwise, when you begin to toss the baton, the tape can begin to roll because it's the fold is facing the wrong direction and it can cause a little bit of uh, chafing on your hands and just be an additional distraction that we definitely don't need. Tape is supposed to minimize distraction. So I'm going to take the fold facing downward and I'm going to start it up at the end that's closest to the big end of the baton. I do this because I typically like to do my high tosses and my big tricks, thumb to ball. It was just the way that I was trained. So I know that when I set up for these, that if I have the tape going in this direction, that it, it won't roll up when I do these tricks. So I start with the big end up and the tape with the fold facing downward. So the crease, the middle point is up. So I know that the open portion is down, again, to clarify. So I'm going to lay it on the starting point, so this first piece of tape that I've got here, and I'm going to find the angle in which I want to tape in. So I pull it really tight, and I go downwards just to find out if there's too much space in between. So that silver part that I was talking about, to see if there's too much space or if it's just tight enough. I like it to be about half the length half the width of the folded tape. That's really specific, but it's totally up to you on how you like to do this. So I like to pull it really, really tight, and once I feel like I've found that angle, I unwrap it a little bit so it's back at that starting point. So I can simply take my piece of black tape that I've got all ready to go right here and stick it on there. So I tape it down, I make sure it's laying flat across in line with that other piece of tape that we've already got down. Again, I'm gonna pull it really tight to make sure that that adhesive gets stuck. I'm gonna kind of fold this one down along that spiral so that the tape can go right over it and hold it down so it's nice and secure. So next, I'm just going to continue this pattern all the way down the baton until I reach this other end. I'll show you how I clip that off, but I'm going to make sure that it's all nice and folded, that the folds aren't uneven, it's nice and tight in there, and I'm just going to pull the tape as tight as I can and lay it down. So I'm just gonna spin the baton here in my right hand as my left hand pulls the tape super tight down on the baton. And you have to be aware of some thumb cramps that happen <laughs> at times when you're doing these, especially when you're taping a lot in a row. All right, now that I've made it to my stopping point, I'm just going to hold it down with my thumb and I'm going to take my scissors and cut it straight across. So it's almost actually at this diagonal, but it's all in line with that tape. I'm gonna take my other piece of black tape and do the same thing as I did on the other side. Really secure it, stretch that tape, wrap it around multiple times, and then warm it up with my fingertips. And then take my last piece of black tape and put it right on that balance point. And it might feel a little bit weird. I know when I look at mine, it feels like it's way off center. But I promise that when you start twirling the baton, it will look much better as it spins in the air than if you were to tape it in the true middle. So I'm going to lay this last piece of black tape right over my midpoint. Before we begin adding the white tape, it's important that I mention that for me, this is a practice baton. And when I competed, we were allowed to have two tones, a black and a white. Be, be sure to clarify the rules for your organization when you're competing at, an, at a competition that requires you to abide by those taping rules and guidelines. And make sure that if you are all one color, you don't have multi-tones, you don't have rainbows of colors, but that you are abiding by the rules. But I'm going to go ahead and add my white tape uh, according to the way that I like it best, especially for practicing. 
So with this white tape, I have a very specific pattern that I like to tape it in, and I have a little bit of a backstory as to why I like it this way. I was at the International Cup in 2013 in Florida, and I was watching the French athletes toss their batons so high up in the air and come back down, and I noticed that as the baton was spinning in the air, it looked like a bullseye. And how easy would it be to catch something that looked exactly like a target? So I looked very carefully at as to how they like to tape their batons. They actually tape their solid with black tape, and they had this little method that I'll show you in the middle, and then they taped from here to the ends in white tape. So I tried that for a little bit and then began to modify it to how I liked it best. So I'll show you how that's done. So I take my first piece of white tape and I lay it just outside of my black tape. Now remember, I like it shorter than the required maximum, so I know that I can lay it a little bit outside of this black tape and still be in the safe zone. However, if you like to push that tape to the maximum, make sure that you lay it right along that black tape. I like to put it just outside so it's still overlapping with that black tape, which will not only help secure the black tape even more, but it will just create a little bit of contrast there on the ends. So from there, I'm gonna pull it tight once again, wrap it around, and if your tape isn't very opaque, you may have to do a couple layers just to make sure that it gets super white if you like to use that white tape. And I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. Now with the centerpiece, this for me is the most important because tracking the middle of the baton is important in anything that you do in twirling, from compulsories to freestyle to big tricks, rolls, everything comes off of this mid-middle balance point. So for me, having an easy, at a glance look and knowing exactly where that balance point is, is so important. So I'm going to take one of my half pieces of white tape and lay it on the outside of my balance point piece of black tape. So it's just outside of it. This one is ever so slightly overlapping, just to hold the edges of that black tape down, but it will just be flush with that black tape. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other piece on the other side. Once again, really warming it up so it gets nice and sticky. And again, stretching it as you tape it will not only help it lay in tighter with that grip tape also, but it will help activate some of that adhesive. So in the end, that's what my baton looks like. If you are going to a competition in which you know you need to abide by these rules and you happen to have a glance at the ceiling and you know what color the ceiling is, you might wanna modify your taping accordingly. If you need it to be all one color, either gray, black or white, meaning you can't have two-tone like mine, black and white, it all needs to be one color, you wanna make sure that that's compatible with the ceiling. For example, if the ceiling is all white, you probably don't want an all white baton that matches it. You wanna be able to kind of modify it on the fly and if you can adjust, that is the best way to go. So having it all one color according to the rules, either gray, black or white, can best be worked into the ceiling color. For my fire batons, for field performances, I like to use this canvas black athletic tape. That way you can easily put it on very quickly, take it off very quickly, so it doesn't get soaked in the gasoline or whatever fuel that you're using and kind of get on it all over your hands, which is not what you want. So for me, I apply this after they've been soaked, right before we go on the field in order to prevent them from getting soaked in the fuel. And since it goes on so quickly, I know that I don't have to worry about any of the taping measuring like I do with my regular batons. My philosophy on tape is the minimal amount is best. So whatever that you feel that you can best twirl in with the least amount of tape is what you should go with. Excessive tape, like I mentioned earlier, can really be a distraction, and you don't want it to be a distraction to yourself, to the judges, or to the audience who's watching you. You want it to be a minimal, streamlined um, addition to your baton more than anything. To wrap this up, taping is such an individual process and it takes a lot of refining, trial and error to figure out what you like best. So I encourage you to incorporate maybe some things that I've tried today as well as trying some things on your own to figure out the best taping for you. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below to let me know. And until next time, work hard and be bold.